Hello, everyone. Another uh, another big win for Michigan State. Uh, we're going to wait for people to get in here, but right off top, go follow the Sports Carnage Podcast Facebook page, which is linked right there in the description if you're watching this live on Facebook. And if you're watching this uh, after we do our Facebook show on YouTube, then the uh, the podcast link as well as the uh, the social store podcast can be found in the uh, in the YouTube description below. So make sure you guys are clicking through that and checking all that out. Um, more more coherent this week. So if any of you watched the video last week, or if you were with us uh, when when we did our Facebook show, um, pr- probably a little bit different energy, but the the same amount of excitement. Maybe maybe a little bit less. Um, but big, not a big win for Michigan State in terms of like what it means for the season, but a big win in terms of the scoreboard. Uh, they did end up covering. You know, I think the line was started close to 20. Uh, it got up to, I want to say, 27 and a half before, before game time, and they won by 28. So if you were a, a Spartan better, you were probably excited to see, to see that outcome uh, and was happy that Youngstown State wasn't able to push in a, uh, a late touchdown um, that wouldn't really have meant anything except it probably would have lost you some money. So the positives for this game are obviously what we saw out of the offense, um, 42 points after 38 last week, so it doesn't take you know a, a math major to know they're scoring 40 points a game over the first two weeks. And I said this to uh, to my friends um, in our in our group chat, but it's nice to you know finally be crushing the the football less fortunate um, again. You know, after years of kind of struggling in these games where you wouldn't necessarily lose them, but you might win an uninspired, like, 24-3 to type game, 24-6 to or something like that. And you got the win. You won by multiple scores. But it was just, you know, clunky, and it was harder than you wanted it to be. Maybe the score was 10-3 to at halftime or something. Um, so it's nice to be able to get back to a space where, um, you know, you see a Youngstown State on the schedule and you can just pencil in the win um, and you know that the play, you know, reflects that and that you are not only getting these 27 and a half point spreads, but that you're actually covering them. So it's a a breath of fresh air for Michigan State. Um, Another week, another 75-yard touchdown to open the game. Uh, I want Elias Sports Bureau to, to get on this because I don't know that that's ever happened. I certainly can't remember it happening because it would be such a, a fluke occurrence, um, really for any level of of football, but especially like college and the NFL, to start off a game not only with touchdowns, right, but long touchdowns, 75 yards, 75 yards plus, and to have those be plays from scrimmage too. So like usually if you start off a game with the touchdown, you probably just took the opening kickback, which wouldn't count. And then you also have to discount any game where maybe your first play was an incomplete play, pass and then your second play was like a 75-yard touchdown. So uh, it's exciting and it's uh, a quirk that, again, I'm not sure has ever happened before, but by like the end of the day, I would like um, uh, I would like to have that information, you know, ESPN Stats and Info, whoever has has to get on it to, to give us that fact to it. Um, what else do we have? I mean, other than that, again, really just a good showing by, you know, the the entire the entire offense. Um, you know, Peyton Thorne played really well, 15-21, 280 yards, four touchdowns. The first Spartan quarterback to throw four touchdowns um, since Brian Lewerke did it in 2017. And then even Anthony Russo got in um, in the second half and went 5-7 of seven and uh, had a, a nice first down pickup on like a, a third and two. Um, option run as far as the running backs go michigan state was able to run the ball really effectively again 272 yards uh 323 total yards of passing which put them just under like 600 total yards of offense for the game uh which again uh a lot especially if you've been following michigan state um these past few years you know the the end of the antonio era um it just seemed like 600 yards was an, an impossibility. They wouldn't get that in, you know, three games um, total sometimes. So that is your live stream. Oh, I don't care about that. Um, sorry, I just got a little pop-up from, from Facebook, and I was reading it to make sure everything was all right. But Jordan Simmons was the lead back today. Uh, 16 carries, 120 yards. Um, Kenneth Walker, 
seven carries, 57 yards. And then uh, it was just kind of a, a platoon after that. Donovan uh, Eaglin, I believe is how, how you pronounce his name. Elijah Collins. Um, and then Thorne and Russo obviously had some runs at, uh, as quarterback. Uh, I'm, I was actually pretty happy that they didn't just feed Kenneth Walker the entire time um, again today because he's obviously the number one back. Um, you know, you saw it when they played, uh, you know, a real opponent last week in Northwestern. Um, kind of more so what Michigan State wanted to do. And you saw them obviously feed Kenneth Walker, uh, and he went crazy. Um, but I do like getting the other guys involved because Michigan State, they do have a deep running back room, uh, you would hope. Right, Jordan Simmons, while nobody from Michigan State really showed uh, a ton of promise last year, um, at least consistently, Jordan Simmons was the only running back last year that showed even a little bit of flash of anything. Um, so to see them, you know, not give up on him and give him 16 carries today, which he was able to use, uh, you know, use effectively, um, was a was a positive sign. And then uh, even Elijah Collins. Um, who two years ago looked pretty good and last year, you know, really disappointing for, I think, um, what we were expecting uh, from him. Um, he had three carries and 32 yards, you know, so uh, almost 11 uh, yards a carry. So it's nice to see them rotate some guys and keep, uh, keep, keep a guy like Kenneth Walker fresh um, so that, you know, when you get on to Big Ten season and in some of these bigger games, you know, you're not kind of kicking yourself for uh, – for putting extra miles on them against uh, against like a Youngstown State type of opponent, that was nice to see. What else? Uh, J- Jaden Reed with a, a pretty ridiculous stat line: four catches, 181 yards, and two touchdowns. Um, it was actually even way more ridiculous than that after his first two catches, which were both long touchdowns. Um, so he had two catches, 160 yards, and two touchdowns. So. Uh, you know, 80 yards a catch after catching a 75-yard touchdown and then an 85-yard touchdown. Um, and then he was able to, you know, come back to earth a little bit. But that's uh, obviously a phenomenal day for him. Um, Jalen Naylor, four catches as well. Uh, he could have had a touchdown. Um, he dropped it on a really nice pass from Peyton Thorne. Um, but still a, still a good day. One thing I did want to um, kind of call out that I thought was a really big positive was the return game. Um, so Jaden Reed did an excellent job on the kick and the punt returns. Uh, he really had like three, well, it was like four big ones, but one of them got called back. So three big ones that uh, that kind of counted. And that was nice to see too. You know, we talked about um, up top how it's refreshing to be able to just kind of beat down a team like Youngstown State and not having to sweat it out. Uh, really, you know, from the first snap, they had that, that, uh, that big touchdown. Um But it was nice to see the return game give you something as well. After all those years of watching, like Brandon Sowards, uh, you know, call for fair catches no matter how much how much space he had in front of him. Um, But that was that that I thought was a big plus. And it might just be Youngstown State, you know, uh, a bad kind of like uh, kick coverage unit. Um, But you know, Reed obviously showed on offense as well of course that he's um that he's a playmaker so i do think you can expect more from the return game this year than we've probably seen since we had like you know uh, Keyshawn martin um returning kicks other than that not a not a whole lot to talk about um you know the defense played pretty the defense played pretty well uh, they probably gave up, you know, a couple more conversions than you'd like. Uh, I think Youngstown State, let me see here. Um, I thought they had a couple fourth down conversions that were, you know, uh, maybe a little bit easier than you liked. And their first uh, drive out of halftime, they came down and scored. Um, and Michigan State was a big at half. It was, you know, 30, 35 to 7 at halftime. Um, so, you know, you can understand them letting off a little bit. Uh, or coming out kind of flat, but I guess you you would have hoped that they'd be able to kind of refocus at halftime um, and keeps keep up some of that uh, that like consistent you know dominance that they had shown. Um, but out of the half, Youngstown State scored. Uh, but again, third down efficiency for Youngstown State, um, nine of twenty. So getting them like two twenty third downs is in- incredible, um, and that's what you want obviously because it means you're probably doing a f- good job on first and second down of not letting them cross the line. Um, but where you may get into trouble 
and probably where you, they got into trouble this game is, you know, it was not necessarily like third and eight or third and long, right? It was third and three, third and two, um, and things that they were kind of able to, to easily convert as opposed to making them be a little bit more predictable on like a third and eight or third and nine where, you know, like you know that they have to throw the ball. So that, uh, that can get, you know, cleaned up on defense. Um, a defensive note is Chester, I believe his last name's, um, is it Harborough? Carborough? Uh, he got the start at corner um, over Ronald Williams, and he played uh, he played pretty well. Um, but, yeah, Youngstown State also thir- three or four on fourth down conversions, which, you know, you need when you're t- playing a team that's better than Youngstown State, uh, you need to be able to get your defense off the field, especially if you force a fourth down, which is already kind of like a, a, a big, you know, I don't want to say momentum boost, but like an emotional boost. Where you have the you have the defense holding up, um, you know the the close fist like hey it's fourth down, uh, and you do get some energy from stopping the team on third down. Um, but if you're just going to give it up on fourth down, you kind of get that that high of getting them to fourth down, and then if they convert it, it's it's kind of over after that. Uh, so a couple things that Michigan State could clean up, but overall um, just a solid performance. And it was, you know, they probably let off um, in the second half where, again, 35-7 at halftime, 7-7 um, seven to seven in the second half. So they ended up winning 42-14. to 14. Uh, What I personally would have liked to see is, like, them just, you know, crush them, crush them. I can understand why you didn't, but, like, a 56-14 to 14 game would have been, uh, I don't know, maybe it just would have been much sweeter to me um, than, than 42-14. But if, you know, you're nitpicking not winning by 40 points instead of, you know, only winning by, by 30, then I think you I think you did a, a all right job on the day, especially what we saw in the first half. Like 400 yards of offense in the first half. Again, they finished with just under 600. So uh, the second half, they really, you know, um, probably just played, you know, way more vanilla than, uh, than they were in the first half. Um, and just kind of let the the game come to its natural conclusion instead of trying to pour on you know a whole bunch of like style points uh, or anything that might impress you know a, a AP voter or something. Um, and you know that that'll come. A ranking will come if you keep winning. Obviously, Michigan State's next game is the uh, the big one. <clears throat> well, the the biggest one so far, right? Not the big one on the year, but they play uh, they play Miami next week. Um, and that's really going to be their first kind of litmus test for, well, that's not true, because I guess Northwestern was, although, you know, even if you don't really think Northwestern is going to be good, it was certainly a, uh, a game for Michigan State that could have gone either way. Um, but they're going to be playing Miami next week on, uh, on the road here. And Miami obviously didn't look too good in week one, but they're facing Alabama. So, you know, kind of what, what could you really expect? Um, and I don't believe they've played yet uh yet this week um but i'll check that Uh, nope they play uh, appalachian state at six o'clock uh so they haven't played yet um you might be able to figure out a little bit more about them if you watch that appalachian state game but next week for michigan state is uh you know kind of what can determine the way the rest of the season goes you know if you beat miami and you start off three and oh um, they already had some top 25 votes last week, I believe. Not a lot, but they were in like the others receiving votes category. Um, they'll probably be in it, you know, this week as well. Uh, so if you beat Miami, that's where I think you can probably start creeping into like the maybe you are ranked 25th, um, and then that turns your expectations on the season. Where I think six and six was, you know, kind of like a hey, th- this would be good for this would be good for us going forward. Um, and if you, you know, you beat Miami, then I think you would start probably looking, uh, towards like in, in eight and four type of record. Um, in some of those games that you saw that you might've thought as, you know, these are toss ups and we'll split these, you know, maybe some of those games going forward, Rutgers, Nebraska, whoever, uh, if you do beat Miami, you start to say, oh, that looks a little bit more like a win in Michigan state's favor. Uh, I, that's, that's obviously projecting and you have to do the job and beat Miami first. But, um, you know, overall, good job today. The offense looked uh, it looked really great in the first half. And then in the second half, um, you know, they, they kind of slowed down. But, you know, you can, you can understand why. 
So that is it's really all we have for you guys today. Um, one thing I will say, and I'll give you guys a shout out, everyone who listened on YouTube or was listening on Facebook, is last week our uh, reaction video uh, to the Northwestern game. We do two. So we do it for the Michigan State game and we do it for the Michigan game. Last week's game against Northwestern on um, – on Facebook, or I'm sorry, not on Facebook, on YouTube, got almost 700 views, and the Michigan game got 60. So, Michigan State fans, uh, excellent job of, of showing out and showing your support. Um, and, you know, let's let's crush those numbers again this week. Let's let the Michigan fan base know that they are not as passionate as you guys. Uh, you know, run those YouTube numbers up. And especially if you can, you know, if you can beat their, if you can beat their video number by... A reaction video against Youngstown State, and they're going to be playing Washington, which you know is just automatically like a more intriguing game. Um, if you guys can can get them there, then you know you can start to rub a little bit of salt in the wound, and no, they just don't care as much as you do. But that is that is what we have for you guys, you know, today. Before you leave, make sure that you check out our Sports Carnage page on Facebook, Twitter. Um, our Facebook's linked in the description here if you're watching it on, on Facebook right now. Um, and if you're watching this on YouTube afterwards, again, our podcast links. So you can find us on uh, Apple Podcasts. You can find us on uh, Spotify as well as Podbean. That's the Sports Carnage Podcast. And all those links as well as the links to our uh, social media will be in the description below on, on YouTube. Um, but if you're watching this again and you miss anything, just go to YouTube. This will probably be uploaded. Uh, in in the next 30 minutes or so so thank you guys so much for joining me today uh it's been a pleasure as always and go green